Hey guys, Paloma here and welcome to the Bates House. Today I'm coming at you with video three of our home organization tour series for 2020. Now I'm sure you've seen many organization videos that pretty much cover all the bases of cleaning, cute containers, labeling, food prep, and more, including the new scientific trend of the science behind storing your foods in the refrigerator. But as you may know, I'm somewhat of a realist. I like my systems to be tried and true before sharing them with you, and in our functional kitchen we are reaching in and out of our fridge very often. Our children ranging from 7 to 19 years old access this space very often as well. So I've created a system that is easy to maintain week to week, and if you're interested in seeing what we've done and possibly getting some real life solutions and inspiration for your refrigerator, then let's go ahead and get started. My mission when creating this system was attempting to find a solution for several problems. I wanted to reduce waste and save money by not losing items behind other items or repurchase the same items when we already had it. I wanted a system that looked nice but not overthought so anyone that opened the fridge could easily maintain it. I also wanted a time saving system that did not require a lot of cleanup and a simple enough system to maintain and not give up on because there's too many steps. And most importantly, I wanted to do it on a very small budget. I can tell you that all of the different systems that I've gone through, this one is the most successful and it has been the most successful for several years for us and our family because I'm able to achieve my mission by implementing live-in containers. Now you may be asking what are live-in containers? Well, they are containers that live in this space. Full or empty, this is where they are stored. It's a very common practice in the restaurant business and being a child of the restaurant business, it only made sense. These containers are not limited to small sizes and specific labels. They are large and filled up with whatever needs to be in them. And once they are empty, they get cleaned out and put back ready for new product week to week. So these items will stay in your refrigerator regardless of what is in them or how much is in them. Let's start off with two birds, one stone. As far as labeling goes in my refrigerator, the extent of the labels you'll see will be with masking tape and a permanent marker. It's dishwasher friendly, it never comes off, and it stays very solid with the color and you can always read what you wrote over time. We raise chickens, so we get fresh eggs every day, and we cycle our eggs one through four. First is the one that we are going to be using first, and four is what we're going to be working our way to. Four holds the fresh eggs daily and we just rotate the eggs in. I found these 14 count egg cartons at Aldi for roughly $5 but Dollar Tree has a $1 dozen version available. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at the actual containers that I leave in my refrigerator from week to week. For starters, here at the Bates House, grocery week begins the night before we go to the groceries. For that dinner, I would try to make sure I use anything that is left in the refrigerator, either for dinner or dessert. That way, after dinner, all the dishes get done and the containers are clean and put back and ready for the next day. Taking a look at the first set of containers, I have these tall rectangular containers that I found at Walmart, I believe for under $4. I really like them because they are a great size and they maximize vertical space as opposed to laying flat or horizontal across the whole shelf and it doesn't require that you stack any containers. So it takes up that vertical space and it lines up easily on the back of the refrigerator so that you have more space to store things in front. Now to maximize the life of your plastic containers when they are a thin plastic is to hand wash and not dishwasher wash. If you do choose to wash them in the dishwasher, make sure that you do not dry them on the heat dry cycle because it can warp the plastic. Also these containers are in my beverage station that I use to store my dry foods such as bread, bagels, chips, snack pretzels and things like that. So I know these containers work very well in different situations. The next set of containers are actually two different sizes. I have four of these low and long rectangular containers and then two of the taller, wider rectangular containers. And these are actually all from Daiso. Daiso has become one of my favorite places for simple, easy to use, easy to clean storage for the refrigerator because they give you a variety for really cheap. Now I will 
eventually graduate to better quality containers. These are BPA free, so I'm good with that, and it's very affordable, so I'm good with that. And for now, they work. So graduating to a better quality container will definitely be out of preference and want as opposed to need, because this system works perfect with what I have. Now you'll notice that some of these containers have a towel along the bottom of the container. There is a reason for this. A lot of your produce retains water and as you have it in a container it will release the water and cause condensation within the container. If you don't have a rack in your container then your produce is going to be sitting in water. Now though a lot of produce actually likes the condensation and likes the humidity and moisture in the air, it doesn't like to sit and rot in the water. The most simple solution is this. Find a set of small towels that you can fold up and put into the bottom of your container and do not take a lot of space and use those week to week. This will ensure that you have enough time to get through your produce before it rots no matter how much you have or what you buy. The only upkeep that you would be required to do would actually depend on your version of food prep because some people actually add more water content to their produce when they are washing and prepping because some do a vinegar wash where they let it sit in a vinegar bath for a few minutes which of course is going to increase the water content. So if you're doing things differently when you prep your food, you will have to have more upkeep during the week as it sits. The only upkeep is if there's anything rotting in the container because it's had a lot more water content or any damage or anything like that, just take it out. It's that simple. Nothing overthought. If you look in, there's something bad, take it out or else it will cause more rot to happen amongst it in the container. And that's all you got to do. If your produce retains a lot more water because you do do a bath and your towel gets drenched a lot faster, then just change it out midweek. It's so simple guys. Now let's talk about the benefits of having larger containers to store your produce. The reason I feel like this works for my refrigerator is because it allows me to put things in its place and push it to the back of the refrigerator. This is important because it takes up that space and nothing gets lost in the corners of your fridge stacked underneath something else. How many times have you lifted a package and realized something was there that you had no clue was there because you couldn't see it? Now with the containers in the back of the refrigerator, you can look straight into the fridge, see what you need, see how much you have, see what needs to be eaten, and nothing goes to waste. In the front of those spaces, it allows you to have specific storage for leftovers. Now in our house, we do not do leftovers often. If we do, it's something that we are going to be purposefully incorporating into the next day's dinner or breakfast. And if in the case there are leftovers, there are specific containers that are stored together that I showed you guys in my kitchen tour. That way we are not fluctuating dishes in and out and all about the kitchen. So not only will having live-in containers contribute to your refrigerator organization, but it will also help you maintain your kitchen cabinet organization as well. Looking into this drawer, you will see a few of the original containers that we put into place whenever we wanted to try out this live-in container system. Mind you, in our house, our entire family works together in different systems. So I needed my kids to be able to maintain the system when they did the dishes and to know that the containers had a specific place and where that place was. So these masking tape labels with permanent marker are actually the original labels from when we started this system years ago. As you can see, it works because they are still on there. As you can see, the lettuce container is empty, so it is clean and put back in its place. That way, when I go to the grocery store, I can just grab the container and put whatever needs to be put in there. The same with the cheese containers. They get cleaned and put back in their place, and this is where they always are. Now, these containers are a great size, and Dollar Tree does carry a Betty Crocker line of long, flat containers just like them for $1, so that is very affordable. Moving into the right drawer, I keep it pretty simple. We go through a lot of English cucumbers. They come wrapped sometimes and sometimes they don't. The long skinny ones last longer than the fatter ones because it retains a lot less water. So go for long skinny if you plan on not going to the grocery store often. Also, I keep a little divider tray in here simply for tomatoes and peppers. 
super simple. So I know at some point I'm going to be asked about cleaning the refrigerator. Now, having everything in containers actually contributes a lot to cleanup in your refrigerator because there's basically no cleanup. That being said, when you do have different things that go in and out of your fridge that have a lot of water or juices in them, I suggest you get a frosted shelf liner or a clear contact paper and line your shelves. Not necessarily just because of the glass, but what you're going to do is take your liner and extend it over the crack where the glass and the frame meet. This is going to give you a lip so your liquids that spill onto the surface do not go under the glass into that frame because it is a pain to clean. I hope that helps. I found the rolls of frosted contact paper at the 99 cent only store for a dollar roll and I only needed one roll. So that was pretty awesome. Now that we've looked at the upper part of the refrigerator, let's go ahead and take a look at the side doors. Now I know there's a lot of temperature control controversy over the door panels, but to be honest, this is what works for us and it's what we do on a daily basis. We always have and nothing has ever gone wrong with what we do. So I have opted to use plastic bottles in my door so that the boys can pull things in and out easily. I had green water bottles previously and recently Dollar Tree came out with these adorable mason jar style bottles, also some marble print bottles, and they are all BPA free. They are water bottles. Super simple, self-explanatory. They are totally kid friendly. They hold a lot of product and perfect for those everyday reach for items that everyone is going to be accessing often. So why is this important? Well, ask yourself this. How many times have you opened your refrigerator and found three different bottles open of the same item because they are scattered throughout your fridge or on multiple shelves? It happens. So what I've done is basically minimize the amount of product that we can have in the door, but have enough of one kind. So on this door panel, I have four water bottles. Left to right, they are an Italian dressing, a buffalo wing sauce, ranch, and barbecue sauce. The basics. Now how do these work for our family? Well, my smallest of seven years old can go into the refrigerator and grab what he needs. He doesn't need help opening any big bottle. He doesn't need help finding it because it's right there, it's always there, and it has a very convenient flip top lid that allows him to pour out what he needs. It's super simple for the older kids to refill because it has a nice wide mouth that you can set your jar onto to make sure your product gets into the bottle. It's nice and long so you don't need any kind of specific cleaner for it and it works great. Also, it was only a dollar. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the handle faux mason jar water bottles with the spout. I find these to be very convenient because they have a handle so they're easy to carry multiples around or pull a few out and move them to the table if we need to for the kids. The spout is small enough to pour out cleanly so we can always keep the tops somewhat clean. And if they get a little too messy, we can just pop them off, wash them real quick in some hot water, and it's clean again. Moving on down to the bottom shelf, I have agave honey, syrup, and regular honey. Now there's one thing you'll notice about the spouts on each one of these bottles. There is no center piece. That is because I did modify each one of the insides of the spouts. All you have to do is take a blade and cut the little clips on the inside of the spout. That will release that center part that blocks off the hole. This way your product will pour a lot nicer, especially when it comes to the thicker products such as syrup, honey, ketchup, and mustard and all that good stuff. So it's totally modifiable and it works amazing. You don't have to worry about anything building up or clumping up or anything like that. You just wipe it off whenever you're done using it and it's like new. So that is a look at the door section of our refrigerator. Now one thing I forgot to address was the top shelf, which is just our homemade yogurt, coffee creamer, and half and half. Self-explanatory. Now moving on to the other side of the door, our mayonnaise is put into a big jar alongside our honey. 
the next shelf I keep it pretty empty but my problem with this shelf used to be hot sauces we are a big family of hot sauce we like a lot of different varieties but I don't like the way hot sauce bottles are so many different shapes and sizes and they get kind of crusty around the top and all that well Dollar Tree has recently put out these two pack dispenser bottles that I absolutely love for hot sauce as you can see I took my permanent marker and just wrote the type of hot sauce that it is on the bottle because they look very similar to the untrained eye so for our kiddos to know which one they're grabbing I just wrote it on there it's not fancy and it's definitely not the most aesthetically pleasing but it works that being said hot sauce dispenser bottles is a must to get rid of that product packaging that I cannot stand Finally, we are moving into our deli drawer. In our deli drawer, I have square containers with lids that I found at Daiso, and each container has a rack on the inside. You can opt to keep it in there, or you can take it out. A lot of the times, this is perfect for your sandwich meats, because a lot of the sandwich meats retain a lot of moisture. This is just going to ensure that your sandwich meat is sitting in the container but not sitting in those juices that can get a little slimy after time. Also, you can put your cheeses directly into these containers. You can wrap them or not wrap them. Either way, they last longer in these containers because they are sealed. I also use these containers for butter. I buy the big container of butter and I put it into these because it just makes it very nice coordinated and uniform and fits in the same spot with everything else not taking up essential retail space from the rest of the refrigerator now in the front I have Dollar Tree gray basket produce containers which are perfect for small produce and they make for great storage for things like your cream cheese or any thick mayonnaise that's flavored or something that doesn't need a larger container they fit perfect in these little containers and again these have the baskets in them you can use them or you can take them out I like to have a few on hand for things that I do not purchase in large quantity because it's not something that I use often this gives me a place to store those miscellaneous items that you're probably testing or are new to you and you're not sure if it's going to become a weekly grocery item having a place for miscellaneous is essential to maintaining your system the way you like it to finish up this video guys we keep our large orange juice in a mason jar at the top of the refrigerator alongside our homemade pickled product and our gallon of milk I just didn't have one in this video because I was out so <laughs> there's that so guys that is pretty much it for the Bates house refrigerator organization tour I do hope that you guys enjoyed please know that I am not knocking all of the creative cute scientific systems I absolutely love the thought that goes into a good organization system especially if it works for that person just in our case here at the Bates house we want to make sure that our kids can manage systems just as easy as we can that is why I put a lot of thought behind the systems that I incorporate into my home and I do trial and error new things and a lot of the times simple works best that is pretty much it for this video guys I hope you enjoyed if you did go ahead and hit that thumbs up button Comment down below, let me know what your favorite affordable solution was. Also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell on your way out to be notified of new videos whenever I do post. And for now, guys, that's it for this one, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!